Hey everybody, welcome to another week here at the Tolerant. We have an ambitious goal this week. We are trying to finish all the can lights in the second floor so that basically the direct lighting is finished. I have in the first floor one section that I haven't connected yet, which is the pantry, but it's still very well hooked up. I just don't have it um, wired into the rest of uh, the circuit. Julie and I will try to do a live stream here on Sunday, February 13th at 2 p.m. Eastern, which would be 8 p.m. Um, Central European time. In case you want to join us, we would love to um, say hi to everybody. It's probably going to be a pretty short um, live stream. We have never done this before, so probably 15, 20 minutes, um, not much more. Um, obviously, if you have some questions, um, feel free to ask them. And otherwise, just join us as we might do a small little tour um, where we are now with the house. You might be wondering why I have four wires here. I have a red, a white, black, and a copper wire. Is uh, The reason for that is that we have a three-way switch. We obviously want to, on a staircase, we're gonna put a switch at the bottom and at the top that can control the same light. And to do that, you have to have an extra 
um, hot wire that basically goes over to the other switch so that they both can control on and off at the same time. Um, I actually have to look up how to wire this. I am not an electrician again, so keep keep that in mind. I'm doing it uh, based on my best knowledge and obviously I have an inspector looking at it afterwards. So I feel pretty confident that I'm gonna do this correctly. Um, one thing that I wanna point out, there's a few different ways, um, configurations on three-way switches. Um, there is the solution that I'm doing on this one right now is where I have both light switches first and then after light. There's also the option of having the light in between the two uh, light switches, which I might actually do upstairs in the hallway. And then the third option is where you have the lights, the light itself first and then the two light switches at the end. So there's these different configurations just for the three-way switches and then obviously it gets even more complicated if you add a, four, uh, a third switch, so meaning a four-way switch at that point. Um, so that, um, if you do that, then of course it gets even more complicated. Well, it looks like it's working now. The diagram that I've been using has a slightly different layout than the, light, uh, the switches that I have. It just flip-flopped two connectors. That's why I connected it incorrectly. But it's working now. I can turn the light on on the top and on the bottom and it just continuously works correctly. I know we have quite a few international followers here, so let me explain a little bit of the standards here in the United States. We have white wires, uh, we have uh, yellow ones. Uh, they're both called Romex. Romex is usually in um, the standard to, to be used in the wall. Um, and this is, I'm talking about here, yellow and white, really just for basic receptacles and for light switches. Um, so, I um, personally chose to only do 15, uh, 15 amp circuits for any of the lights uh, while I am running all my receptacles at the 12 gauge wire, so the yellow one. Um, so this is a thicker wire, the yellow, than the white one is. It lets you run at 20 amps versus the 15 amps on the 14 gauge wire. Um, so there's one more difference that I have to point out is in the United States the cables that have four strands instead of just the three as the standard. Um, for a standard light circuit you just need um, 
a hot, which is in the United States always black, um, a neutral, which is always white, and a bare copper, which is the ground. Um, it is not green or anything, it's always bare um, in the United States. And um, so that's usually the, the standard one that you need for lights or for standard receptacles. Um, if you running a th um, three way slash four way um, lighting circuit, you will need a, f uh, a second hot um, circuit to run between, uh, to run from one switch to the other so you can have continuous um, hot um, and then obviously the two switches controlling when the light is on or not. So, uh, and that is usually a red wire. So if you open a wall and you have red, black um, in the United States, that means it's probably a four-way or three-way configuration. Um, if it's just a black and a white, then at that point it is just a standard. Um, after, um, in old houses, you might even find you might only have a black wire um, or just a single white wire to uh, your light switches where they didn't run a neutral and or a ground to the light switch itself. They just ran it to the light. Um, that is not standard anymore, but in old houses you might find that. Um, that is also one of the things that a lot of the new um, smart home switches are requiring. So in case you're upgrading um, a light switch and you only have two wires in the box, um, usually two black ones, then you can uh, not use most of the um, light switches um, that make a, that make, uh, <coughs> most of the smart light switches because you always need a neutral um, to just run back to the breaker. So I have a few spots in the house where I'm using three-way configurations. Um, besides upstairs in the second floor in the hallway, I have one at the end on each side, <clears throat> one in front of Elias's room, and then obviously at the end here where you walk out of the hallway, 
Um, we have a three-way configuration here where I'm in the bathroom, um, in the Jack and Chill bathroom for the kids. I have a three-way configuration where I basically turn on the light over here and over here where you go into the two different closets and then the other uh, three-way configuration is the stairs. Um, when you walk up to the up the stairs in the back and in the front, we will have three-way configurations to just turn on and off the lights um, at the top of the stairs and at the bottom of the stairs. Obviously, that's a safety, um, especially on the stairs, just so you don't have to walk down or up when it's completely dark. Um, otherwise, in the in the hallways, there's a standard that if a hallway is a certain length, that you're supposed to put one in. Um, and then obviously in this bathroom, it just makes sense when you have two entry points to a room um, Having a light switch on either either common entry spot just is a convenience in general I Don't have a lot of those sections here. Most of my rooms are just single entry So it doesn't matter. But for example, this bathroom Is one of those configurations. So those are the kind of situations where you might use a three-way switch um, nowadays, when you want to put a smart switch in, a lot of the smart switches have little remotes that you can also install in the wall. So you don't actually have to have a full three-way configuration. You can just make a three-way configuration. The, usually the small re remotes look exactly the same as a light switch. All you need to do is um, buy one of those boxes um, at the hardware store that you just put in afterwards and then um, you just mount they usually sell a bracket for the remote also so you can just also install it in the wall it will look like a, a complete switch but you actually don't need anything obviously it's going to be battery powered at that point and um, you just have to continuously add uh, batteries again but from, from my understanding is these remotes really don't use much that much battery so shouldn't have that much issues with it um, but that's one of the um, nice things nowadays that if you're adding a smart switch and you have especially in a remodel situation where you don't where you don't open all the walls like I am doing here um, you might be able to add yourself a three-way configuration with just buying a smart switch installing that and then adding um, that remote at another convenient point in the room obviously you can also control at that point the lights with your phone or uh, with siri alexa or google assistant or one of those other um, helpers So I'm here in Elias's room. We have the overhang 
where I have two can lights. They are not enough to light up the entire room. So what we are going to do is in the open space, we will have a chandelier or something hanging um, all the way from the ceiling. So I am going to probably frame out a, spot, a flat spot at the top so that we can mount um, the lights and everything. And we will obviously, obviously also need lights um, in the loft section of the room. So that is one of the things that we just have to do in the next few weeks also. Oh yep, yeah. and before I forget, um, you guys all pointed out, um, it's probably about, at least when I looked, about half and half between half of the stairs or half of the, uh, in the center of the room. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to just mount a box at the top. Obviously the box on the chandelier, I am not just gonna hang the chandelier on the box itself. I am going to um, add some blocking up there so that we can actually do a hook wherever it's gonna be the perfect spot um, at the end. And then we're just gonna feed a chain plus the wire to the box and then down the hook, um, of course, the chain again to the chandelier. Well, it is pretty late and the only can light that I didn't finish connecting was the light in the upstairs guest bathroom. We will do that next week, Saturday. Um, I will have also a friend uh, come by, help us on Saturday. I think Tom has already helped us a couple times before with um, some runs to the landfill. He is an apprentice electrician, so he is going to help us connect all the receptacles. It's just so much work, so he's going to help us with that. Um, and I think this is it for this week. Have a great week, and I will see you next time I turn on the camera. Bye! <laughs>